Russia has been reportedly using highly explosive weapons against Ukraine for the past few months. Additionally, over the last few weeks, the Russian army has been trying to attack Kyiv, but thanks to Elon Musk, they were never able to do so. Elon Musk and Germany have sent some really powerful weapons to the Ukrainian army in an attempt to prevent the Russian army and Putin from invading the country. What kind of weapon was it that had the ability to stop the colossal army of Russia from invading Kyiv? And what is exactly Musk's plan to beat Putin? Well, give the video a thumbs up and stay tuned to find out. Welcome to Genius's Guide, your daily dose of geniusness. The Russian army has been bombarding a potential target in Ukraine with high explosives for the past few months. At present, the Earth is rapidly approaching both the capability of deploying a high-yield weapon and being able to deliver it with ballistic missiles. Depending on which group of scientists you believe, the threat of an attack by a high-altitude nuke at the height of the atmosphere can range from an overhyped doomsayer fantasy to a gravely overlooked and virtually existential challenge to the Ukrainian people. But thanks to the tech icon Elon Musk, he has been actively defending Ukraine from Russian attacks since the very beginning. Among other things, he had delivered trucks loaded with his own made satellites, named Starlink. And now he is sending anti-tank missiles to Ukraine and raising some restrictions on the use of SWIFT by Russia in the global financial system. It was announced in a statement released by the German Ministry of the Economy and Climate that Germany is allowing the Netherlands to send 400 anti-tank weapons manufactured in Germany to Ukraine. The Russian invasion of Ukraine marks a turning point in the history of the country. According to Olaf Scholz, Germany's chancellor, it threatens our entire post-war order. In this situation, it is our duty to do our best to help Ukraine defend itself against Vladimir Putin's invading army. The German government has long maintained a policy of not exporting weapons that can be used in conflict with other countries, including Ukraine. But several government officials stated recently that they would adhere to this policy. It has come under fire from Ukrainian officials and other allies since it has not acted decisively enough to help Ukraine defend itself against the invasion by the Russians. However, Germany had previously provided Ukraine with 5,000 helmets for defense. Moreover, the German government also announced it would send 14 armored vehicles and up to 10,000 tons of fuel to Ukraine. Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock and Economy Minister Robert Habeck said Ukraine must be able to defend itself after Russia's shameless attack on the country. Later, she said that the federal government is therefore supporting Ukraine in providing urgently needed material. And Mr. Scholz said that the Germans would also be sending 500 Stinger missiles to Ukraine. And in addition to this, the German government also lifted some restrictions relating to the sending of German-made weapons to conflict zones, which means that the third countries will be able to send more arms to Ukraine. At the same time, as mentioned before, German ministers have said they are working on restricting Russia's access to the SWIFT global interbank payment system in a targeted way that hits the right people and avoids collateral damage. There are challenges facing Germany's three-party coalition government, which is composed of socialists, liberals and greens, as they attempt to formulate a coherent response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. However, there is a growing sense in Germany that in order to maintain its security, it may have to rely on both trade and diplomacy, as well as its military might. The public figures who were previously seen expressing sympathy toward Moscow have either come to their senses or have stated that they were wrong in doing so. Annalena Baerbock, herself a Green, tweeted, Our world is different after Putin's war of aggression. While we are stunned by this breach of international law, we are not powerless. That's why we will help the Ukrainian soldiers fighting for their country with anti-tank weapons and Stinger missiles. Germans have been shocked by Russian President Vladimir Putin's actions in Ukraine and have been calling for their government to take more strict actions against the Kremlin. And that's where Musk's plan comes in. In addition to the satellites and anti-tank, Musk has been developing ultra-advanced tanks in order to defeat Putin. Those tanks are known as EMP tanks. So what are these tanks? Well, the first thing we need to know about this tank is what is an EMP? And then we will get to know a little bit more about it. The electromagnetic pulse is a powerful, intense and short duration pulse that consists of alternating electric and magnetic fields. Due to its fast rise, time and short life, it has a Fourier content spanning the whole frequency spectrum from DC to light. The intensity of this power can range from kilovolts to megavolts, which can potentially destroy anything that is electrical or electronic. Typically, an EMP can be brought about by natural events such as lightning or by a solar flare or coronal mass ejection CME, from the sun. On the other hand, an engineered device used as a weapon could also produce such a blast. 
Nuclear explosions can produce a very large electromagnetic pulse depending on how much nuclear material has been detonated during the explosion. There have also been other non-nuclear EMP weapons developed. It is important to consider that a mass EMP has the potential to destroy everything from the electrical grid to your smartphone and everything in between. As a result of the tremendous fields that are generated, everything is induced with very large voltages, leading to high currents in the equipment and components. A building with any wiring that can function as an antenna will be bombarded with a massive dose of these fields and will be destroyed. These include large items such as all or part of our electrical grids. In the past year, Elon Musk has studied the possibility of EMPs and how to deal with them. There are rogue countries such as North Korea and Iran that have the capability to trigger an EMP with nuclear weapons. He knows that the size of the blast would determine how much space the blast would affect. In most situations, you would not lose everything due to the fact that electrical and magnetic fields decrease in intensity with distance. However, in the blaster zone, the electric grid as well as every automobile, television, radio, phone, appliance and other electronic gadgets would be destroyed. But as we all know that Musk has teams of the world's finest engineers and scientists, so this led to further development of nuclear bombs optimized for EMP effects, instead of physical destruction. So with EMP tanks, equipped with E-bombs with a lethal radius of just a few kilometers, even a battalion-sized force. A great deal of air and naval assets could be taken out with ease. In addition, Musk had observed that the damage to the electronic systems would require a long period of time to be repaired. So there would be months of downtime for the combat systems. As a result, not having a working combat system and no command and information systems will likely cause confusion and uncertainty, which will, in turn, give the offensive side an advantage to gain early gains and turn the situation in our favor. Meanwhile, on the other side of the battlefield, the defending forces can disrupt enemy control and coordination with the use of EMP tanks. Since EMP tanks are not very effective in a wide range of areas, it would take a lot of these machines to cover the full battle zone, including things like war rooms, operations centers, force HQs, airfields, anti-aircraft missile systems, etc. According to Musk, EMP tanks could be significantly more effective than regular tanks since they wouldn't even spare the dugouts or blast protected targets. Just a single wave of EMP could seriously weaken a force. In fact, even localized damage can cause problems, especially if it is coupled with other forms of attack. So the chances are extremely low that an EMP attack will occur when taking into account how gnarly it could be. However, Musk has enemies who could be surprised by seeing such a thing in the field. Sadly, it is also the best way of bringing the country to its knees. Covid did not destroy us, but it did cause us great damage. However, a countrywide EMP attack could very well end humanity if it occurs. Anyway, what do you guys think about this? Let us know in the comments below. And make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for us to provide you with more must-know developments in finance and technology. We'll see you soon. Peace.